Hello. Um, my name is Russell Belfer. I work at GitHub on libgit2. And uh, a couple of folks have um, asked to hear a little bit more just about the state of libgit2, because some of you may be aware that we are actually not at a 1.0 release yet. Um, so uh, the question that I've probably gotten the most during uh, this conference has been, uh, when will core git be rewritten on top of libgit2? Um, and the answer to that, in case there's any question, is never. Um, the, uh, we serve different masters, right? Um, everything that uh, Vicent talked about uh, when he was speaking is uh, all the things that core git does that make it not so useful in a server setting are actually good things for it to be doing, right? They're, it helps it run quickly. They solve the problem in as efficient way as possible for uh, executing a particular command. And that's what they should be doing. And so um, there's some hope that in the future we may share um, code modules, you know, if, for example, if there's a fantastic merge engine or fantastic file similarity detection or whatever it might be, that we may share some code. But they are independent projects, and you should not be thinking of them as somehow, well, well one will replace the other. Um, so if you hang on just a moment. There we go. Um, so what is the state of libgit2? So libgit2 is very close to a 1.0 release. Um, anything that you want to do typically with a Git repository locally, you can probably do, almost anything. Um, you can read and write objects. You can create trees, commits. You can manipulate the index. Um, essentially, anything that you would do with references, objects, configuration settings is, should all be available to you. Uh, we support fetch and push over HTTP and Git um, with uh, SSH. Well, there's a SSH pull request that's probably ready to be merged in the next couple weeks or so, uh, which should give us fairly good network support. Um, on Windows, we support WinHTTP, so it's nicely integrated with the rest of the system. Um, a pretty good experience. We support uh, diff status with ignores and uh, uh, CRLF filtering, rename detection, a pretty wide range of things there. Um, history walking, ref logs, uh, branching, rev parse, checkout, provided there are no conflicts. Uh, stash, notes, submodules, um, all of the access to the object database, to references, and to configurations actually support uh, pluggable storage backends. So um, out of the box, libgit2 ships with uh, your traditional file system backends for dealing with Git repositories as you know and use all the time. But you can actually create your own uh, backend objects to store those however you want to. And uh, there's some. Uh, experimentation with some alternatives there. Um, it also supports uh, nicely configurable caching. So you can say, oh, I'd like to keep cache trees in memory. So as you do have these long-lived processes, you can do, uh, you can sort of make some intelligent decisions about what you'd like to save in memory so that things can be more efficient in the long run. So. Uh, no, I actually just have notes. So um, sorry. Uh, I. I can put this up in a uh, state of libgit2 document in the libgit2 repo. But right now, I'm sorry, I just have notes. Um, sorry, this is a little last minute. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess the flip side of what libgit2 can do is what can't it do, what's missing. So probably the biggest thing that's missing is we do not have a merge engine that is complete. Uh, there is a merge in progress. Uh, some beginning parts of it have been uh, merged. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's other stuff that's on the way, but it is not done. And as a result, you can't really do pull, because we don't have a good way of merging in things when you pull. Um, we also don't have blame right now. That's also a work in progress. Um, this is, uh, in case it's not incredibly obvious to everyone, uh, libgit2 is, oh, there we go. Um, in case it's not obvious to everyone, libgit2 is fully open source. So you can actually just go on to GitHub libgit2 organization, libgit2 project, and see all the pull requests in progress, comment on them, say, I don't like the way this API is designed, and we, we, we actually care. Um, there are some things that are, some other small things that are still missing. Uh, our status doesn't currently support rename detection in status. Um, that's probably on the way. There's lots of little things. Um, diff doesn't support word diff or function context. Uh, you can't do recursive clones right now. Um, some ref manipulation doesn't automatically write ref logs. And 
there's a bunch of things that you would have to potentially do manually if you were looking at logs or things like that. But it's pretty good. There are a few known bugs, although they're pretty small. Um, a lot of, uh, if you're running on case insensitive file systems, or particularly if you're running on uh, case insensitive but case preserving file systems, that is um, evil. And, uh, well, not evil, it's very convenient, but uh, it is uh, not so convenient for Git. Um, and then on Windows, there's still some oddities with symlinks and things like that. But for the most part, it is pretty good. Um, and I'll actually talk later about ways that you can help with those very things. Um, so uh, libg2 runs on a lot of platforms, right? So uh, Linux, Mac OS, Windows, Solaris, a bunch of BSDs, um, uh, Amiga OS, for those of you who are Amiga fans. That's, um, most of the operations across this platform, uh, many of the operations are thread safe. Um, that is not everything, but we've certainly concentrated on access to the objects, and so you can have multiple threads that are access, that are at least looking up and reading the data in the repository, and that seems to work uh, pretty well uh, across threads. Um, that, again, will probably get better over time, but mostly through you all using it and uh, you know, writing your own Git uh, applications. Um, so uh, bindings, um, most people don't write C. Um, apparently, I, I don't know why, but um, and so uh, there are bindings in a lot of different languages. Uh, libgit 2 sharp is probably the most uh, advanced of the bindings right now. It covers almost 100% of the functionality that is in uh, libgit 2, and it is a very idiomatic binding. So if you are a C sharp fan, it should feel very natural. Um, uh, rugged is the Ruby binding. It is. Um, further behind, um, but it is, um, and actually, uh, well, Rugged and Objective Git, which is the Objective C binding, and PyGit2, which is the Python binding, um, those three, um, and none of them are complete bindings, but actually a lot, they're all fairly active, and a lot of the work that they've been doing recently have driven API changes in the underlying library to make it actually easier for them to provide idiomatic support for accessing Git that's natural to users of that language. Um, in particular, I think that um, there's a couple of the PyGit2 folks here, who are here. I think that PyGit has been doing a lot of work on trying to become more idiomatic so that it feels more natural to the language users. Um, so um, the last thing really that I have to say is, you know, if you're interested in libgit2 and you'd like to get involved, it is a fairly easy project to get involved with. Um, because you can access it from so many languages, if you're interested in looking at Git data, manipulating Git data, you can probably pull down a binding in your language of choice and just start playing around. And to the extent that you do that and are willing to contribute back sample code, you know, here's a little experiment that I did in this thing, that's amazing for us, right? Because that is how people use the library and learn to kind of have fun with their Git repositories. And so anything that you do uh, that you're willing to share is helpful. Um, you're also certainly welcome to open issues because uh, I think it is still a young library and you will find them, and uh, we like that. Um, you're also very welcome to open PRs. Um, it uh, pull requests. libg 2 is a very, very typical open source project, right? We have, um, you know, uh, in any given month, we're likely to have uh, oh, 15 to 20 contributors. Uh, lots of people will just fork it, open PRs, and the team. Uh, we really try to make a, a lot of effort to be very supportive. So it's a pretty easy uh, project to get involved in. Actually, if you look at our README, there's a section on good starter projects if you want to start uh, playing around with things. And I think most of the binding teams are also very receptive to people who want to come in and start finding small things that they can, ways that they can enhance things or play around with it. Um, so I don't know, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Sure. <coughs> I noticed that you just, a few weeks ago, actually cut a release. We did. Which was nice. I tried the Python bindings a week before, and that was not really fun. Yeah. Um, so um, what's the idea of kind of cutting milestones going forward? Yeah, so we, um, we had been on a pretty good track, and uh, it, it's, <sighs> these things happen. Um, so uh, we were shooting for a, um, a release basically last October um, as the Microsoft folks started getting more involved um, and we started getting actually a little bit more ambitious because the team of folks who were actively working in the library grew. We're like, oh, well, we'll shoot for a 1.0 release by the end of the year. 
these things happen anyhow. So um, <laughs> we did just cut the 0 0.18 release. Um, I think we are going to make an effort to do more frequent releases. And, you know, at least uh, we had been doing pretty well on every three to four months doing releases prior to that. And so hopefully we'll be at least back on that track, if not more frequent. Um, our big thing has been, um, and as you may have noticed if you looked at the differences between the last two releases, um, is we've tried to get all of the um, breaking API changes in now um, so that we can actually get to a 1.0 release where we won't break the API. Um, and so that's been actually one of the big challenges for the project over like the last six months as we've been kind of pushing in many breaking API changes. Um, hopefully it is resulting in a more consistent and standard API. So um, it should get us to a good place. But uh, we welcome your free to open issues and say, you know, you guys suck, please stop doing that. Um, or, or uh, I mean, actually, the release that did happen, um, I don't know if you followed it, but it was actually largely driven over an issue that was opened, I think, uh, by the PyGit folks um, just saying, like, hey, come on, it's time for a release. But it's fine. We're, we're totally happy to have that. We had a little back and forth discussion and, you know, ultimately did, uh, you know, try to understand why having that particular tag was important and, and, and pushed it out. So anything else? Okay. Thanks for your time.